burning dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your it's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. Well, I hope we're back with you. Man, we have got a real big winner here, man. We have got uh, Mr. Larry Hankin, and he is was Charlie Butts in the Escape from Alcatraz, Ace and Running Scared, uh, Carl and Biddy, uh, Billy Ma- uh, Madison, and also was in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. How are you, sir? Well, I'm I'm fine. Yeah, Doobie, uh, Taxiola, and Trains. That's my favorite movie. So that, that's my favorite character, Doobie. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> you. planes, yeah. trains, and automobiles is my favorite movie too. I get, I've watched it a dozen times. That has got to be the funniest show, funniest movie ever. Yeah, and it was. I'll, t- I'll tell you, especially them sitting on the trunk when the car explodes behind them. Oh Lord. <laughs> It gets me every time. I don't. I don't think you could got any better actors in that whole movie. I thought everything was perfect because I mean it was just. Yeah, I, I tell you, yeah, that that is, that is true. Well, that's John Hughes. That's uh, no, it, yeah. It, did did John Hughes direct that or Chris Columbus? I think John Hughes directed. Yeah, that, didn't yeah. He? I think you're right. I don't know. Man, I love that. And they tried, right, Yeah, but that was a great movie. They tried to remake it two three times, some different you know themes, but they just there's oh, no way. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah. No, John Hughes has this special kind of sense of humor. The way he films jokes and stuff is, uh, you know, because I'm I'm basically a stand up comedian. I started out as a stand up comedian, so I I pay attention to how they film a joke, you know, to make it the funniest, you know, just the angle where you put the camera. And John Hughes is great. You can't imitate that. You know, I, it's pretty hard to imitate that kind of. Well, you know, that's the thing about yeah, a lot humor. of a lot of directors are not comedians. They don't understand the joke. I mean, they get the joke, but they exactly. don't understand it. So, but now you, I didn't know you started uh, out as a comedian. But tell me, everybody that I interview as a comedian was a school teacher before they started in comedian and, and being a comic. Tell me, God, you <laughs> weren't a school teacher? Uh, no, no, I, I, I wasn't a school teacher. What I was was uh, I graduated from Syracuse University as an industrial designer. I was uh, I was going to go to um, Detroit and design cars for huh? for a lot of money. And uh, my best friend in Syracuse University was a guy named Carl Gottlieb, who later uh, and and we're still friends to this day. Uh, he later uh, wrote all of the Jaws movies, uh, except one I think. But he wrote Jaws and, huh? and a lot of other movies. So he said, "Let's go to let's go to Greenwich Village," and, and I said, "Well, I'm going to Detroit, you know, I'm making a lot of money." And he said, "No, let's go to let's go to Greenwich Village," and and he wanted to be a writer. And I I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be an industrial designer. I'd gone to college just to please my parents. Oh yeah, they wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. And I said, "Well, no, let's go to Greenwich Village and starve for a while." <laughs> I I did that. Uh, it was amazing. I never looked back, though. I I, I, I love, you know, being h- hard up for money in in Greenwich Village until I got a a paying, you know, stand up comedy uh, job. So right. I paid my dues, but uh, it, it worked. I I didn't have to go to Detroit. That was the aim. Oh, you, not to go to Detroit. You were a bit. You were in some great, great, great stuff. I mean, Escape from Al- Alcatraz. I mean, Running Scared. These are all cool movies. Oh man, in. Alcatraz! That's another uh, very good movie. I, that's one of my favorite. But that's my favorite because I like what I did in right. that movie. Uh, the, the movie is great. I, re- I really like the movie. But I liked what I was doing because that was my first uh, Escape from Alcatraz was my first big major Hollywood movie, and I was very nervous through the whole shoot i was there for three months on alcatraz island 
and I didn't know what was going on. It was uh, I was like a, a a kid in a in a new place in a new world. Right. But when I watched the movie, for some reason, I guess it was the d- director. I was very relaxed, and right. I don't think I've ever been that relaxed in a in a movie in in all my years. You know, I mean, that's why I like what I did in that movie because because how relaxed I was. But I think that was because the director he just. Calm me down every day. He would just say, it's going to be okay, Larry. Don't worry about it. It's got, that's got a lot to do with it. But now I have got to ask you, while I'm, you was actually on Friends, I think, for five e- episodes, maybe six. I don't know. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is is Jennifer Aniston, is, is she as pretty in real life as she is on TV? Well, yes. yes okay. Definitely. Yes. She's a very pretty, very pretty woman. Uh, even back then. And she still is. Yeah. Right. Uh, but but I I don't know her at all. I mean, even back back then, even when I was working and doing the five stuff, so they they the all the the stars of that show, they hung together. You know, well m- most regular because I've been on a lot of TV, you know, sitcoms and uh, episodics where there's a lot of regular actors on it every every week, and they hang together. You know, when the director yells cut, right. They kind of huddle up together. They, they they keep to themselves. It's hard to, you know, get get in their gang. You know, they yeah. they, they know each other very well because they've been working for years together. Yeah. You know? So uh, so I don't I don't know her at all. But from afar, <laughs> she's a very pretty lady. There yeah. you go. Yeah, Lord of mercy. But uh, now, when you was in playing, well, I guess all the women. Now wait a minute. I got to give the props to everybody. The three women on that show were good looking, right. you know, <laughs> no question. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to favor any any one of those ladies. There you go. There you go. But now you look good, too, though. Now let's give you some credit, too, while we're well, talking about it. You there you much. go. Yeah. The, the, the thing that I got to mention, though, is that there's going to be a special um, on uh, Friends yeah. on HBO Max. Uh, um, and I'm going to be on that. They're just going to have everybody... Well, a lot of people. I don't know but everybody, but they're gonna have the, the a special, um, uh, a, a two hour special on Friends, and uh, I don't know. It's like April, sometime in April. Well, that'd be good. So yeah, they they're they're that show is all over the world now. Oh yeah, I, I get a lot of I get a lot of fans from just that that uh, sitcom, Mister Heckles. Yeah. Well, that was great. Mister Heckles is. Is, is well, Mister. I, you know, I it was just another role for me. You know, you go in, you do. It's a job. After a while, after you acting for a couple of years, it's just another job. Right. So I just went in and I did my my work. You know, I, I did my. I remembered my lines. I hit my spot. I I, I didn't interrupt anybody. And uh, but Mister Heckles is very popular, especially in India. Right. I don't understand why, but oh, it was great. He is. Yeah, it was a great part. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a great part. Like uh, well, it turned out. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't think it was a, a great part. It was a nice part. I, I, I like working. I like acting. Uh, but it turned out to be a very nice part for me uh, in, in its popularity. I, di- I didn't think it was any different than any other part that I did. So you can't tell. Right. You really can't tell. You just go in, you do your job, and you go home and. Wait for the next job. That's well. Now that's what I do. Let's go into you know you were in Breaking Bad. How was that? Well, that was that was great. I mean, you're mentioning all the all the good stuff. I it mean, really this is are. my favorite. I, all this stuff I'm talking about, I've seen you in. I'm like, this is cool. Well, the, my these are my favorite too, and and it turns out these are the fans' favorite. Breaking Bad. I mean, you know, Vince Gilligan is a great writer. He right. really writes great words that you like to memorize. And uh, it's hard for me to memorize words, by the way. Uh, I have dyslexia. Hey! So it takes me, me a while. Me to, too. Me too. I'm with you 100%. You do? I, yes. Okay, well, you understand. I yeah. understand. Um, I, 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 it takes a long time, but, but Vince writes words that are more easily remembered than than other, other writers. Right. And he's a great director, too. I was in... Uh, two Breaking Bads, the TV uh, series, and then I was in the movie, so he was directing the movie too. So he's a really fine director. I, I would work for him any time, any day. Yeah. You know, but that, that, uh, that's a great show. Yes, I, it, I was the. I, I don't get hooked 
on shows. You know, I don't watch them. I'll, maybe I'll watch me in the show. But there's very few shows that I watch regularly. But Breaking Bad, I would not miss. I watched it. all of them, all the time. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was a fan. Yeah. Basically, when I got that part, um, I, I was a fan already. So it just blew my mind that, you know, to get a job where you're a fan already. Oh, was, yeah. It was thrilling. Yeah. I, you know, you know, you talk about being dyslexic. I think that helps you out a lot with your uh, comedy. I think your brain works different than most yes. people, and I think you know the way it's set up. Because I, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, that's what I believe. I, I believe that uh, it's, I got Maybe it's more right, uh, left brain than right brain, or something. I know a lot of uh, creative people uh, have dyslexia of some sort, right. or OCD, or ADHD. Some something. It's a little quirky, you know, just a little off, yeah. you know, I, and it just makes them look at the world a little different. And I, I, I hope that's what helps my comedy because when I was a stand-up comedian, I was, uh, I was opening for Woody Allen. Yeah, that's I cool. I was opening for uh, Miles Davis. So wow. these were pretty hip people, you know. Yeah, it is. So I, I must have been pretty funny. But well, now you've got your <laughs> own thing been. going on now, right? Well, yeah, yeah, I make my little comedy films now. You know, they're just mine. Whenever I get up, uh, I save up enough money for my acting jobs. I'll go out and make a little funny film, and I put them up on, uh, they're on Vimeo, they're on my website, uh, the um, the dot com. There's a couple of my uh, my favorites, uh, films, little film shorts. I got art up there. I got uh, uh, T-shirts. I got everything. <laughs> when I get bored, I start to draw. So I, I do T-shirts, dead designs, and uh, um, what else is up there? Well, my biography. There's a lot of stuff about me. Yeah, if you're curious. Well, now you guys, you've had a very interesting career, and like I said, I'm gonna tell them folks out there listening again, uh, the real Larry Hankin dot com. Y'all need to go check it out because he's got a lot of stuff on there, and uh, these little shorts are great. And T-shirts, man, who don't want to walk around with one of your T-shirts on? I mean. We need- well, they're they're again they're quirky. They're 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 not your regular t-shirts. I mean, I have you know like animals. I have uh, uh, that I painted. They're, they're all art that I paint. Basically, I have my art up there. These are big three feet by four feet paintings. Right. Yeah, that I'm selling on there. And then I, I, a lot of people said, "Hey, you know, I'd like a t-shirt of that. Could you make it into a t-shirt?" And I thought, "Hey, that's a great idea." Right. So a lot of the art I, I made. Onto I put onto a t-shirts. There's animals, there's elephants and dogs and stuff, regular stuff that you would buy. But there's also like just just quirky art stuff, yeah. uh, you know, paintings and and, and portraits and uh, landscapes and just a lot a lot of stuff that you want to wear. Or, well, or now, are you are you shooting any movies of your own now? Well, um, I'm about to and. In a couple of, in about two months, I'll, I'll start again. I, I, I'm going to be shooting. You know, here's for something very interesting, which I've never done, and this is really weird. So I'll, I'll tell you about it. Right. Uh, what I, what I just did was I did a small little cameo in a movie in Romania, but I did it from my living room really? because of digital. Oh, yeah. In other words, I have an iPhone, and the director called me from from Romania, from uh, some the capital of Romania. I don't know where he called me from, uh, and uh, he, he speaks English, and he wanted me to do a a, a little a little part, uh, and he said I could do it from my home on my iPhone. So he just told me what he wanted. He sent me the script. It was a two two pages, uh, a monologue. Uh, I was calling basically what part was I was calling my son. Uh, I was an older uh, dad. Right. I was calling my, my son. And I did it on my iPhone, uh, and I mailed it to him. And he thought it was really great, and it's going to go into a feature film. And I just did it from my living room, sitting on my couch. That's amazing. Hey, that's an easy that's money really right easy. there, brother. You don't even got to leave the house. Well, yeah. The check. Uh, yeah, and you know, I, I did everything the way he said. You know, I, I, he said I wanted this kind of background. If you could have it in your living room, you know, right. this kind of background, and the light should be this, and you should do this. And I did all that, and I sent them. And, and then what, what you do is you send it to him, and then he looks at it, and then he sends it, and then he sends an email back saying, g- giving you direction like, no, 
could you look the other way or, you know, right. use a different background. So one night I was watching a Lakers game. It was really late at night. So, you know, I just had my lighting of, you know, lamps and stuff. Right. There's no sunlight. It was dark out. And I just was watching the Laker game and I got bored with the Laker game. And I just went over to the couch and I just wanted to see if I remembered my lines. I wasn't trying to be an actor. I just wanted to see if I could. So I picked up my iPhone and I just sat on my couch. I didn't check the lighting or anything. Right. I just sat on my couch and did it for my lines. And I did my part. I did the whole thing. And then I went back to watching the Laker game. And I I, when I watched it the next day, I said, hey, this is really great. Right. And I sent it to him, and he's going to use it. There you go. And so it, 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 not only was I in my living room, but I did it while I was watching a Laker game. I just went off on the couch, you know, uh, and shut off the TV so I wouldn't hear the voice. And I just sent it to him. In other words, I, I didn't even mean to be an actor, right. be an actor you know. I but, just was rehearsing. Well, he just and wanted it's going the natural. In the movie, so that's really wild. That digital, yeah, is that easy? I know it. That's amazing. Yep, that's it. So anyway, Larry, we have got to get to a break, but I have got to tell you, okay. man, it has been a pleasure talking to you. I'll guarantee it. Y'all folks need to go to the real Larry Hankin dot com. Check him out. Order some of his stuff. Support him, man. All this COVID going up, he's needing the money, right? Yeah, well, thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate it, and I like talking to a fellow dyslexic. Thank you. There you go. Hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, and thank you for being in planes, trains, and automobiles, baby. Thank you. (laughs) Take care. Thank you very much, Steve. Take it easy, man. Bye. Thank you for listening. This is Stephen Phillips, host of The Morning Dish. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot more interviews out there to listen to. Plus, you can listen online every morning at WJULradio.com or Lake 97.7 WJUL. And give us a like on our Facebook page, The Morning Dish.